What, what are you doing? Oh my god! <laughs> Show me your head kick. <laughs> With my expert. <laughs> you teach her that, right? I taught her everything she knows. I'm like the Star Wars kid. <laughs> <laughs> Yo guys, I'm back. We're doing about two weeks between updates now, so um, I'm gonna do my best to recall everything I did here. We're gonna talk about uh, my last week of hard training and my taper. Um, I missed uh, the first workout of this week. I didn't get recorded. This is, uh, so this, the week I, s I showed you guys previously, or the two weeks, um, I actually thought I was going to get a taper after that, but I performed so well that Ben was like, well, let's do another week of pain. So I uh, got the volume up pretty high on bench. This this day right here was day two of bench. It was eight sets of four with 330, which I, I'm sure is a volume PR for me. And that was the last set right there. So I showed the first and last sets. Pretty happy about that. Then uh, six sets of five here on squats. Uh, this is with 555, and this felt awful. <laughs> um, it just, you know, the, I actually felt pretty good through most of this training cycle um, uh, until this last week, um, and just did not feel good at all. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's one of those things where you just, you know, I I've done, I've done enough of these overreaching cycles um, where I've gotten confident that just because I feel terrible does not mean I'm not going to perform well. Um, and you're going to, you can see that a little bit later in, in the video. Um, but I mean, these actually, even though I felt bad, they were, they're actually moving relatively smoothly. And, uh, so I was happy about that, but, uh, you know, overreaching, it's a funny thing. Um, Basically, the way it feels is just, you know, every single rep feels slow. Um, you don't want to lift. You don't feel like lifting. You have very low motivation. And that's normally where most people will back off, you know. Um, and to actually properly get the benefits of training, you need to overreach at points and taper and super compensate. That's how you get stronger. That's how you optimize strength. Uh, oh, by the way, check out the new sweet BioLane logo in the BioLane Lab gym. Um, so this was five ninety five for, I think, five sets of three. Uh, Paul Ravella got me that logo for my birthday last Christmas, and my wife was awesome enough to put it up because it was a pain in the butt. But yeah, I think I think it looks pretty sweet. Uh, so anyway, lots of videos gonna get filmed uh, uh, from that. I. One of the things about overreaching is that, like I was saying, most people will stop when they start feeling bad like that, when they start feeling terrible. And that is the point at which you need to push through. Um, now, it's not like you push through and you're going to set PRs when you're feeling that bad. This is uh, 350, 355 for sets of two, or 350 for sets of two, I'm sorry. It's not like you're going to set PRs when you're, when you're feeling like that. You're not. Um, you're likely not, but if you grind through it, you're going to, uh, when you super compensate, you're going to see a big, big difference. So that was, I'm sorry, seven, seven sets of two. There. All right. Now here's the day where it really felt bad. This is 585 and we're doing six sets of three and then the AMRAP set. And, uh, I was wearing my singlet because, and there's the first rep and felt like I was going to fail. <laughs> Um, uh, it's interesting, the, the mindset. So I literally felt like I was going to fail on that first rep. And what I just told myself was, okay, I'm still standing. I can go down for another one. And look how slow that third rep is. 
I mean, that's most people would say, you know what, that's it. And I thought about saying, you know what, I just don't have it today. I'm going to back off. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just screw it. What's the point? Um, I said, you know what, I'm still standing. I got one more. And that's the way I approach my training. If I'm still standing, I can do one more. Okay. Um, now, did it feel good? No, it felt terrible. It felt absolutely terrible. Um, but I got it done. And as you can see on the AMRAP, I actually got five, um, which I was completely uh, shocked at that I got five. Uh, on the first set, you also notice, so I, I was, I, I want to point out, I was wearing a singlet because I wanted to get the, you know, when you're at a meet, you're wearing a shirt and a singlet. And when I'm training, I'm just wearing a shirt. It actually changes the way the belt fits. So I was actually using a, the, the lever belt in the first, the first set you saw, and then my pink belt in the last set. This is uh, 360 for eight sets of one. Um, pretty smooth belt. But, I, I, you know, what's funny is I really loved that lever belt until I had all those problems with the levers. And then I changed, and now I've got that lever from Iron Tanks, which is fantastic. I love the lever from Iron Tanks. That thing, I'm pretty convinced you can't work. Um, but I, I just, I, I, I like the prong belt better. It's weird. Um, I've tried it several times. I think part of it is that because I'm also in between notches on that prong belt, so one is too tight and one is too loose, whereas the pink one fits me perfectly. Uh, that is, uh, that, I'm sorry, that was uh, five sets of singles with 635. Okay, so here's the taper, Quote, quotations, air quotations, taper. First set with 535, I'm gonna do five sets of five. There's the first rep. Second rep, this felt so terrible and so awful, I just racked it. I was pissed. I was just pissed off. And I came back about 10 seconds later and finished the last three. But I was pissed. Um, it just, it didn't feel good. Um, not only did it feel good, I just was completely out of my groove. And this is 535 for five sets of five. This should be, I mean, I don't want to say easy, but I did five sets of seven the week before with 520 and it was, it was moving very smoothly. So, you know, that can definitely shake your confidence. And I, I've, I, always get, I always feel like this going into a taper. The first day of a taper is brutal because your intensity is mostly still there. Um, the intensity is still pretty high. And I'm still overreached. So, but I got it done. Okay, I got the 565 done. But I want you guys to keep in mind what those squats look like. Because when we go to the testing days, I think you're going to be pretty surprised. Um... And so the next taper day, quote, air quotations, taper, was uh, four sets of three with 565, okay? And again, 565 on a taper, <laughs> I was pretty skeptical. Um, and Ben did not want to test um, my one rep max this time. He thought it took too much out of me. So we're just, we're actually gonna test reps, as you're gonna see here. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty heavy on a taper. But uh, the three, the 565 actually moved pretty well for triples. Then here is, uh, I believe this is 320 for doubles. Or no, I'm sorry, it's 330 for doubles. Or, wait. <laughs> sorry, 320 for four. I'm sorry, 320 for fours. I got confused. Uh, again, this is like a week and a half ago, so I'm trying to recall all of what I did. Um, this was, yeah, and these felt okay. Um, I'm actually, it's, it's fun when I get to look at the, the or not fun, but um, when I'm wearing the tighter clothing, I can actually tell that my arch has gotten a lot better, which I used to have pretty much nothing, and now it's gotten considerably better, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, but the bench was feeling okay. Um, Deadlift-wise, what do we have here on deadlift? I think this is 595, or I'm sorry, it was 600 for singles, what I was doing. So that was Wednesday. I was going to be testing on Saturday. And on Thursday, Mark Lobleyer came into town. Now, um, Mark was the CEO of Salvation all the way back in 2004. Um, and Mark 
and I met, as, as many of you know, I've been with Foundation 10 years. Um, Mark and I met, basically, I knew him through a message board, Mind and Muscle, uh, dot net. Uh, by the way, this is my last taper day. This is, this is 360 for, uh, I'm sorry, 355 for sets of two. Um, Mark had seen me post and uh, had sent me some of the Salvation products and I was actually, uh, liked them quite a bit and I wrote up a post about, you know, what I thought of them and Mark sent me a message saying, hey, how would you like to go to the Olympia uh, in 2004? And of course, uh, I jumped all over that and, um, you know, we had a really great weekend, trained together a lot, um, uh, talked a lot. And uh, really uh, meshed well. Mark is a very intense guy. Uh, his videos of him yelling into the camera, that, that is how Mark is 100% of the time. Mark is not a different person. Uh, he, he is who he is, um, which is awesome. I appreciate that, that you know, kind of uh, not trying to disguise who you are. Um, and so, you know, we, I'm a pretty intense person, not, not as intense as Mark is. Um, and so we actually meshed pretty well. And, uh, you know, I'll be forever grateful to Mark for kind of, uh, you know, taking a chance on me uh, and really did a lot to try and help promote my, my name in the industry. So, uh, you guys, I'll, I'll leave uh, Mark's uh, link to his YouTube. So for you guys, you can go over and, and check him out. Uh, I know he sent me a bunch of uh, his followers over here um, in the past few days. So I really appreciate that. And welcome to you guys. Hopefully you enjoy the channel. Um, so we did a we did a bench workout because again it was my my last bench workout before my test day, and then we did a bro workout. Uh, wasn't super intense or anything. Obviously I'm not going to go to failure on flies or anything like that um, with a test day coming up in two days. But um, you know we had a good time. Afterwards we went out to uh, Square One Burgers, which is my favorite burger place in Tampa. They have awesome bison burgers and sweet potato fries and, uh, you know, just sat down and chat. It was nice because, um, you know, it's been probably five years since we've done that because whenever we're at expos or, or we're, you know, out in the business, um, we just, we don't have time. I mean, it's basically me stopping by or him stopping by, taking a quick picture, saying, hey, how's the wife and kids, and then having to go on and, and do our things. So... Um, it was great to get to, to be around Mark for a day and, um, you know, wish him all the best because, um, you know, Mark, you know, some people don't like Mark in the industry, just like some people don't like me in the industry. And, you know, I get that. You're not, you know, he's not everybody's cup of tea, just like I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But um, he's always treated me extremely well. And, uh, you know, I'll be forever grateful um, for him and, and the people at, and everybody at Salvation for, um, you know, giving me an outlet and, and, uh, and believing in me. So, uh, it was really great to, to catch up and, and get a bro workout in. Um, talking about, you know, the taper, uh, definitely was a little bit more aggressive, uh, than usual, but I, it was interesting during this week, I, I really kind of, I don't want to say my confidence was shook, but you know, on Monday doing 535 for fives and having it just move so obnoxiously slow, um, you know, that messes with anybody. And so basically what we had set up for our test days, what Ben had set up was he said, okay, you're gonna do you're gonna do singles on each of your on each of your max lifts with with you know a heavy weight for you know three or four sets. And then on your last set you're gonna do an amp rep. And so the weights we picked out for squat was 600, for bench was 365, and then deadlift was supposed to be 670, but I told him there was absolutely 0% chance that I was doing 670, and 100% chance I was doing 675, because that's, uh, I have an ego like anybody, and I like to see seven plates on each side of the deadlift. So, uh, but actually what I did to uh, equate for that was I actually, for my singles, I just did 665. So that when I did my AMRAP, I could adjust in volume. Uh, and you guys, will, you guys will see all that. But I wanted to kind of explain that ahead of time because it would get 
a little bit wordy if I was trying to do that uh, during the actual sets. Me get wordy? No, never. I would never do that, right? You guys know. It's not like I make half-hour videos or anything like that. Um, but if you're still listening, that means you are an awesome follower, and I truly appreciate that, so thank you. Um, actually, looking at this video, I, was, I actually was relatively happy with how my, my development's going. You know, I'm, I'm training, you know, basically for strength. I put in some accessory days like this, um, but honestly... Um, I'll be straight up with you guys. Uh, I'm a dad. Um, you know, I want to spend enough time with my kids, and, uh, with my, my son, and my wife, and then get all my business responsibilities in. And, you know, sometimes after the end of a three hour squat and deadlift session, I just don't have time or don't feel like going in and doing curls, you know, or going in and doing uh, lat pull downs. And uh, so to see, you know, my arms are a little bit smaller than they were. I'd say I'd probably lost about a third of an inch or maybe a half inch off my arms. But one of the benefits is also I know I'm, I'm relatively genetically blessed in the arm area. And so I know that if I put, you know, a good month of training or two months of training in really intensely on arms, they'll, they'll probably come back up because that's happened to me in the past, uh, especially when I was working with uh, Dr. Zordos in the past. I was squatting four times a week. I basically stopped doing arms. And uh, within, you know, two months of training them hard, they were, they were back up to where they were. So when I decide to do a bodybuilding show again, you know, that will be, I'm not super worried about um, getting them back up to snuff. And I can tell you that my legs have definitely gotten bigger. Um, I've had a lot of people comment on my legs when I'm in the gym. So that's kind of cool for me to, because some of you guys probably don't know because you haven't followed me that long, but about you know, 10 years ago when I was younger, I mean, people made straight up fun of me for my legs. And I mean, looking back, it, you know, I had really, really small thighs. I mean, I just had small quads. Now, I still, my calves aren't great. Um, no question about that. But, uh, you know, my, my quads and hamstrings have, have come up to the point where I wouldn't say they're... Mm, I'm never going to have the biggest quads on stage. Um, but uh, I'm also not going to have quads where somebody's going to be like, oh, man, that dude even trained legs. So that's, that's cool for me. And I would actually say maybe they're one of my better body parts now, which is cool. Um, actually, what's funny is Mark and I took a picture at the end of this training session. Mark always, you know, his arms are his hardest uh, muscles to grow. Um, uh, and I took a picture with Mark at the end of this training session. And I actually looked uh, kind of jacked in it, in my shirt. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, God. Here come the accusations. <laughs> And uh, I thought about that for a second, and I actually was kind of, no, I don't want to say upset, but I was like, oh, crap, I actually look good in that picture. I never thought I would think that way. And it's gotten that way because of all the ridiculous accusations out there. Um, and I'm not going to go off the whole diatribe on the natty versus not natty stuff. My Lord knows that's been done to death. But... I mean, it really says something about the sad state of affairs when I, you know, you see a picture of yourself and you're like, oh man, I look too big in that picture. People are going to accuse me. So I had to pull my shit together and say, you know what, screw those people. Um, you know, you can go back and look at my progress. I've been doing this for 15 years. I have over, I have over 10 years of documented progress. I have 14 years of documented progress. Started putting my stuff in there in 2001. Show me anywhere in there where I made enormous jumps, more than 10 pounds in a year. You won't find it. Okay, that's enough of that. Here's the first single with 600. Okay, that was faster than the first rep on, uh, on 535. So, uh, of the five sets of five. So, as you can tell, um, taper and mindset make a huge difference. And, uh, you know, I could tell just with these, with these singles that I was feeling and I couldn't wait to get a, a shot at the, the AMRAP. And, uh, you know, it's always fun when you, when you get in the gym and you know you're about to have a good day. Because my, I, I'm a, I can really grind on lifts. I have the ability to really grind through lifts uh, more than most people. Um, ben said I'm kind of an anomaly in that aspect. So I knew that the fact that the singles were going pretty quick, that I, I was going to do well. Um, 
and I did. Um, you know, I I knew that uh, four or five reps should definitely be there, maybe six. And uh, here's the AMRAP set. Ended up getting five. Uh, but the first three were really fast. I was very happy. Um, you can just see, like, I mean, they're just flying up. The The problem was I got into on the fourth rep was the bar started rolling up my back. And that slowed me down, got me out of position. And then on the fifth rep, it rolled all the way up onto the top of my traps. And that really slowed me down and prevented me from getting a sixth rep. In fact, you can see here at the, at the, at the end of the set, I kind of like look disappointed because I'm, I knew I could have had six if I really had nailed those first five. But I'm not going to complain about 605. So uh, this was I was really happy about. This is 365 on bench. Um, so we did four singles on squat, then the AMRAP. We did three singles on bench, and then the AMRAP. And three singles on deadlift, and then the AMRAP. Bench, I couldn't tell. I knew I was going to get at least two reps. Um, but based on how it was moving, it was kind of hard for me to tell how it was going to go. Um, I really wanted three. Uh, if I hit three, that was going to be an all-time PR for me. Uh, and especially at this body weight. I, I'd never hit anything close to this, this body weight. And I, I got three. I was really, really happy with that. And they moved smooth. I could just tell on the first rep that I was going to get at least three. Uh, I, yeah, I, I could tell I was going to get three. In the back of my mind, after the third rep, I thought about going for four, but you know what? It would have been a hell of a grinder, and I probably wouldn't have gotten it. And it just would have been, you know, I don't like to miss reps during training, so. Uh, this is the first single with 665. Or I'm sorry, maybe that was the second one. I think I only got two of these recorded. And what's interesting is you can see how, how slow these are, how slow these singles are. Uh, and yeah, here's... Here's another one with Ryan Doris uh, forgetting to get his butt out of the way of my camera. <laughs> so um, what's interesting is you can see how slow these are. Um, and Ryan made a comment of that I really do a good job of staying in position off the ground. And that's really important. A lot of people, here's the AMRAP. A lot of people try to rush the ball off the ground on sumo and they let their hips come up. And that is incorrect. Keep your hips down, break the floor with your quads, and then once you break, you're going to lock it out. But your knees should be locking out in concert with your hips, not first. If you lock your knees out first, you have a hard time locking up the bar. And got four reps on my AMRAP for 675. I was pretty pumped about that. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just a great week of training, and I'm really excited. I feel like I'm back on track. Um, you know, the... the the one rep maxes that those those lifts work out to would be really ridiculous uh -huh. in, in terms of um, what it would total up to at a meet. But I'm not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about I want to beat my previous best. And if I do that, uh, I know I have a good shot to, to win, win at the other Classic. Um, but all I can do is PR me. I can only PR me. I can't help what everybody else is going to do. So I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to do the best I can do. And uh, I think it'll, it'll result in a good outcome for me. Uh, here's some training footage of Paul. He was doing AMRAP on deadlift and got 12 with 405. I was really impressed because watching his first four, I, I thought there was no way he was going to get 10. And uh, he really did a nice job of staying in position. And, and this, this alludes to what I was talking to about in sumo deadlift. I see a lot of people on deadlift, they just kind of go down and try to yank the ball off the ground. They get really really impatient with the bar and they try to yank it they walk out they let their hips come up first you need to break the ground with your legs now once you do that you're going to use some of your back you're going to use your back to, to, to walk it through but if you break the the ground the ground using your back um, you're making it a lot harder especially because the bar is likely to get away from your shins and become a much less efficient movement. and uh this is why paul is able to finish that even after the first few reps being so difficult. Uh, so here's some training footage of Lauren. Uh, many of you know, Lauren won her IPV Pro card in Bikini a few, uh, few, mo few months back at Nationals. She won overall at Nationals. Uh, her boyfriend Ryan, who's spotting her here, was in town. And so uh, they were in training at the same time I was. So she's doing box squats with bands, uh, working on her speed. And I always like showing footage uh, of Lauren just because 
Um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of girls especially have this idea of, oh, I can't squat, I can't deadlift, it's going to make me bulky. Uh, and that's complete nonsense. Muscle looks good, period. And uh, the best way to change your physique, the best way to improve your body composition is to do big compound movements. And uh, here's Ryan doing some reverse band squats. Um, this basically, the same th it's the same principle as bands going the other way, except this allows you to lose more weight. Uh, Ryan is getting ready, for, and here's him doing some deficit deadlifts. Uh, Ryan is getting ready for Raw Unity, which is one of the uh, biggest raw meets in the country. Very, very tough. I did it in 2010. Uh, but Ryan's a real strong guy and very young, and uh, I definitely he's already told over 1,600 pounds, so he's definitely going to be uh, one to watch. And uh, here's some video of me uh, trolling. This is my coach, Ben, actually. Uh, ben Escrow, for those that don't know, you should go check him out. And uh, this is Ryan giving some instruction on the deadlift to, to Pamela Sampson, a friend of ours. So that's it, guys. Um... It was a really good week, um, even though the, the it started out kind of tough in terms of how training was going. Um, it ended up well, and uh, I'm really excited, looking forward to seeing what my maxes are going to be when it comes to the Arnold. Um, I have some ideas, some numbers I want to hit, but uh, we'll just see. And as we can see, Ryan's instruction worked for Pam because she nailed these reps. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. I'm out.